When Catherine asked me to talk about the three paintings of the villages of Worcester that hang in the auditorium, I wondered how I could talk for 40 minutes about three paintings. I'm not really sure that I can, but I'll give it a try. I guess the first thing you might like to know is where the paintings came from. Well, in 1975, some of the citizens of Worcester decided to form an historical society. One of the first projects was the publishing of the Worcester History Book. That was in 1976. Over the years, there were many other fundraising efforts. Some of them, one of them was the publication of the three paintings that I had done of the three villages in Worcester. Each painting was printed in a smaller size and sold for $40, and in a limited edition of 250 Because the Historical Society building was not suitable for displaying original watercolors, they were given to Meadowood to display. The first painting is of Fairview Village. That's at the intersection of Valley Forge Road and Germantown Pike. It was originally known as Fairview Hill and affords an unequal view of the south and east of Montgomery County. On the left is Fairview General Store. It was also a post office and at a barber shop at one time. In front of the store, we see Ephraim Hendricks. He was a store manager. He's giving directions to a bewildered motorist. On the right, you see a little corner of the Jacob Thomas Farm. This was a favorite spot for watering horses as they went along Germantown Pike. On the upper right is the fair the, the View Fair Inn. And across Germantown Pike is the pre-revolutionary war building that may have been the first store in the village. Behind the house, going north on Valley Forge Road, for a decade or so, there was a race course that drew participants and spectators from as far away as Philadelphia. It was not very popular with the local residents. Also not shown in the painting behind the general store is the Fairview Village Assembly Hall. This was the home of the Farmers Union Company for the recovery of stolen horses and the detecting of thieves. Quite a long name, uh, but in their whole history, I think they didn't detect more than six horse thieves, but the building was used for many social events, including the Boy Scouts, they had pool tournaments here, and I remember going to a lot of square dances. The horse company had an annual horse show that was preceded by a parade. It went down Germantown Pike, starting at the high school. The homes along the parade route were encouraged to be decorated with prizes given to the one judged the best. Making its way down Valley Forge Road, you can see the green and yellow Woggle Boat. It was one of the four cars of the Montgomery Transit Company that was designed to run from Trooper to Souderton but it never made it that far. Construction began in 1902, and it took five years to make it as far as Center Point, and then another five years to Harleysville. It was continued, dis, uh, the service was discontinued in 1925 after it had a bad accident. The power station was located in Skipack. A story is told of about a 
chartered trip to an event in Philadelphia, and it was returning late in the evening. The man at the power station in Skipack had forgotten about the special trip and shut off the power at 11 p.m. as usual. So when the trolley switched onto the Wogglebug line, there was no power. And the motorist, he had to walk a mile and a half to find a telephone so he could call the powerhouse attendant and get him out of bed to turn the power back on. The second painting depicts the village of Cedars. It was originally called Cedar Hill. But when a post office was installed in the store, Hill was dropped because there was another Cedar Hill in Pennsylvania. At the turn of the century, the general store was run by the Castle family. It carried everything from furniture and clothing to farm equipment and hardware. It was a regular stop for the Woggle Bug. One day it was it said that the Wogglebug overturned and destroyed the front porch of the store. Uh, maybe that's where it got its name, Wogglebug. The building on the right was a feed store. That's no longer there. Behind the store were two barns. One contained a cider press and became known, of course, as the Cider Barn. As you can see, they had many brands of gasoline for the owners of the relatively new automobiles. In 1959, the property was bought by Bob and Faith Dibble. Bob was a Navy pilot and left in an executive position with IBM to start an antique business at the store. Bob also started the annual flea market. And in addition, he began collecting old farm buildings, hauling them to the store, fixing them up, and renting them out. Bob was a good friend and quite a character. He tells a story of commandeering a Navy torpedo bomber while serving on an aircraft carrier in the Pacific during World War II and flying it to Hawaii. He ran out of gas and he ditched it in a field close to a road. He was able to get it on a flatbed truck and transport it to the airport. Now because the road had been crisscrossed with wires to prevent Japanese from landing on it, he had to stand on the tail of the plane and use a stick to lift the wires up so the rudder could pass underneath. Bob also claims to have met the Hawaiian who Michener, he was Michener's uh, inspiration for the character of Bloody Mary in Tales of, Tales of the South Pacific. Now we come to Center Point the intersection of Valley Forge Road and Skipback Pike. Its name comes from the fact that the geographical center of Montgomery County is located near a flagpole at the front of the Exxon station. In the painting, you're standing in the middle of Skipback Pike looking north. On the left is the Center Point Hotel, and on the right, where there used to be a golf station, is once again an open field. For many years, there was a stand here where the farmers could leave their milk cans for the creamery to pick up. Bisecting the painting on, with the horses and wagon traffic is Valley Forge Road. On the corner of Valley Forge and Skipback Pike is the general store. It was built in 1829. The store was in constant operation until 1967. 
For its last 49 years, it was run by Harold Allabaugh and his son Wilson. Almost anything a local resident needed could be found at the store, which comprised a cellar, three floors, and a barn. In addition, you could pay your electric bill, have films developed, leave electrical appliances and shoes to be repaired. It also served as a bank. Paychecks could be cashed and deposited. When automobiles came in, Mr. Allabach had a tank installed in the back of the store. A clerk would use a two-quart container to dip gasoline and pour it into the car's tank. The small white building behind the store is the Farmers Union building. It was built in 1895 by the progressive farmers of the township. There were stalls for horses on the ground floor and a small meeting room. Upstairs was an auditorium that seated 400 and a stage. Many social activities were held here, as well as Boy Scouts, school graduation ceremonies, many square dances. I've been there lots of times for square dances. They even played basketball. It was used for voting or church suppers, and for a short time, high school classes were held here. And for 10 years, the county egg auction. In 1958, it was acquired by the township and later leased to the Historical Society, where they exhibit their collection of 19th century household goods and agricultural equipment. Across from Skipback Pike is the general store, or is, from the general store is the Dresher House. In 1902, a number of residents formed the Montgomery Telephone Company. Originally, the switchboard was across the street in the lobby of the Center Point Hotel. But in 1906, it was moved across the street to the second floor of the Dresher House. In the fall of 1998, I was contacted by Barbara Cerisi, who at that time was Meadowood's marketing director. She called about, a, about the possibility of painting a mural on the wall of the new therapy pool, which incidentally was constructed by Caesar Gorski. The project was commissioned by a resident donor, Julia Bosenberger. The lighthouse on the left of the mural was the one thing she wanted to be sure was included in the mural because it was uh, near her home at the Jersey Shore. The pool had a current lane on one side and at the dedication of the pool, it was surrounded by guests and residents. And to demonstrate the pool, Sill Rittenhouse dove in and the splash soaked everybody on that side of the pool. When Jenny and I moved in three years ago, I found the mural was beginning to look its age. So my first job as resident was to make the needed repairs. The watercolor that hangs in the great room is the Peter Wentz Farmstead. We lived just across Shear Road from the farm for 42 years. It had been in the Schultz family for a hundred years, but the county acquired the property. Both the house and the barn were converted to its original construction. It was originally built by Peter, Wentz, Peter Wentz's son. And incidentally, Peter Wentz Sr.'s home is directly behind Meadowood. 
The painting shows the north side of the barn. It is a bank barn. This style of barn was usually built on a hill and faced south. The hay floor could be accessed from the ground level or as in the case with the Wentz barn from a ramp. The ground floor with the stalls facing south so it could get more sunlight. To the right of the barn is the back of the homestead, showing the external bake oven. To the left, across Zacharias Creek, is the Rothenberger farm that has recently been acquired by the county. The farmstead also includes a museum, a variety of farm animals, and a kitchen garden. When the pandemic is over, very knowledgeable guides are available for tours. Because the farmstead was so accessible, I probably painted it in all seasons and weather conditions. I have one more piece of art on display here at Meadowood, and it's the one that means the most to me. When I lost Ginny in May of last year, I asked if I could give a painting in her memory. I was so grateful that they agreed. I chose a watercolor that was a favorite of hers. Ginny grew up in Jeffersonville on the largest pigeon farm on the East Coast. She loved birds, and especially the chickens. One day when I was I was painting a farmyard scene, and on the spur of the moment, I decided to add a six-year-old Jenny talking to the hens. I was so surprised and grateful that it was hung right outside the dining room where I can see it every day. I've always had fun doing cartoons. The first one was published in the Stewart Junior High School paper, and I often included them in letters during the war and to friends and family. After the war, along with my brother and a good friend, Chris Branda, we came up with a single panel daily cartoon about a high school girl we named Terry Hathaway. I followed her through high school graduation, vacation to the Jersey Shore, and entering college. silk screen business, so Terry was left on the drawing board. Cartooning became a sometime thing. A sometime thing until 12 years ago, when I started making political com comments with cartoons. They continued until we moved to Meadowood. 
where I changed from commenting on politics to commenting on life here. For most of last year, many of the cartoons had to do with COVID. I hope that they have helped to bring a little, a little sunshine into our pandemic world. I see I have a little time left, so I'll close with a few of them. Yes, the past year has been a little like going through a dark tunnel, but at last we are near the end and will soon emerge into a bright new day.